Hello, and welcome to the first real video on my channel. Today I'm going to show you some crappy opinions and have everyone judge me. I'm going to be counting down the top 10 Mario Kart 8 tracks. Also, I have no idea why I chose Iggy, but I don't have anyone else say racist, so... Here we go! Why did I do that voice? <laughs> this one just barely made the list. I used to enjoy this one more, but it's kinda worn its welcome. This is definitely one of the best and better tracks in the game. It's good to see a legitimate race track in the game, and with really good vi visuals. The best part about this track is how you can do several tricks, which is really satisfying to do. Overall, this is a pretty great track, and I really enjoy this one. Seeing how high of an opinion that I have on this one, you can probably guess that the next one, that this game just has a lot of good tracks. Next up, Sherbert Land, the ice cream one. The main reason it's on here is because of the nostalgia of playing it with my dad on Double Dash and Visual Appeal. This might be the best looking track in the game. I really enjoy winter and the Christmas lights and putting it at night just makes it so much better. And now the hazards that I always fell in because I really suck are shortcuts, which also looks amazing. So the only real reason it's on here is because of nostalgia and visual appeal, but this segment is too short. So I'd say that this track definitely got better since GameCube, except for Daisy Cruiser. That track's amazing. Why is that not in Mario Kart? Why isn't Funky Kong in the game? Number eight. Twisted Mansion. This is the spooky track of the game, and they tried their best at making it scary, but I feel like part of the reason I, I like this track so much is because of an older track in the game, Luigi's Mansion, of which I have no bias of why I like that track whatsoever. But on the track itself, I think all the crazy stuff that happens seems to better fit in both a Mario Kart game, and a place called Twisted Mansion in general. This track also, in my opinion, has one of the better uses of whatever the hover wheel mechanic is called, switching with it on and off, over and over, and this place has good visuals which really hits the spoopy vibe. I wish that the outdoor section of it was a little bit more spread out like it was in Mario Kart 7, but what can you do? This track is cool, and I don't know how I'm going to end this one either. Number 7, Sweet Sweet Canyon. I can just taste the cavities already. But on to the track. It is obviously based off of candy. The main reason I chose this is because, number 1, I have an unhealthy obsession with sweets. And number 2, visual appeal. This place just looks amazing. And with all the small touches, it just looks like I could eat it all with a chomp. Some things I don't like about it is the section with the two branching paths. Do I like it? Yes. Do I think it's a good concept? Yes. Do I feel like it's a fun part? Yes. So why? The water. The water is supposed to be syrup, I think. And if it is, it's so uncomfortable syrup is so sticky. But it's not sticky, which might mean it's just dirty water, which is worse. Is that a bad reason for not liking it? Yes. Do I regret that? Not at all. You know, this place kind of reminds me of that track in the Wreck-It Ralph movie, you know, like, I'm gonna crush you, and it's wrecked. <laughs> Mount Wario, the best one-lap track with checkpoints, and the only one on this list. I have no idea why they decided to give Wario a mountain, but here we are. Something that I've seen at the end of it, that a lot of it is based off of Mario and Sonic at the Winter Games, mainly at the end, and I have a lot of nostalgia for playing that game, and that probably seeps into my opinion. And yes, the beginning ice part is bad, Except if you don't suck. Unlike me, I suck. But the checkpoints get better and better. Then there's the middle part, which is okay, but the last part is amazing. You start going down the hill after starting with an absolutely glorious ski jump. You get to continually go down the hill with several obstacles along the way, and reaching the end gives you that feeling of gloriously sliding into the winning area. And now, on to the next one. Number 5, Sunshine Airport. I'd argue that this is probably Nintendo's replacement of Coconut Mall. Does it live up to it? 
No, it doesn't. Coconut Mall is beautiful. I'm not biased. But on to the airport. You go on to the road where all the planes are taking off. Then you go into the air and fly down like a plane, down onto the ground, and go back into the building. Which sounds really boring when I think about it. But I think you just have to play the course. Also, the visual appeal. Of which is probably the thousandth time I've mentioned visual appeal. The main visual appeal about this track is number one, how like nice those sky and water looks when you're in the air, and also all those airplanes shooting off into the background look amazing. But I don't have anything left to say. I'm terrible at transitions. So number four, Wario Stadium. This stage is amazing. I'm going to put it at that. Part of the reason why I like it so much is the same as Sherbert Land. Because on Mario Kart Wii, I really liked this game. You know, I just realized how good Mario Kart Wii is. But on to Wario Stadium. This stage is just action-packed. There's tons of hills, a lot like dirt biking. Actually, it's basically a dirt bike stadium, isn't it? Eh? But the obstacles like the spinning fire bars are great. Something that I think of this is that it kind of reminds me of a test map in Mario Kart 8. Unlike Mario Kart Wii and Mario Kart 7, actually it was kind of like that in Mario Kart 7 as well, but there's basically everything. Obstacles that slow you down, the floating wheels, and Wario areas. I mean water areas. <laughs> but Wario Stadium just gives you that <gasps> Wario feeling. Number 3. Wow, I'm terrible at transitions. Super Bell Subway. This is kind of like the mall aesthetic of Coconut Mall on part of it, which already makes it a top tier track. But the best part about it is how you can get hit by a train. I've always really liked traffic oriented maps. This one doesn't really fit in that category since the traffic doesn't really do much. And there's also huge gaps in between the train. I really wish that was different. But you can go up the sides of the walls, kind of the sides of the walls, onto the greats and then do a really cool jump and land on the train that I've only done once in the three years I've been playing this game was really satisfying though I think this is a very underrated stage but you know people could say wow you have a really terrible opinion so that makes sense compared to the list so far but on to another traffic stage number two Toad Harbor this is probably the track that makes the most sense to people. It's always been a really popular track since Mario Kart 8 came out. This is a really visually appealing stage. I really like the ocean beach city aesthetic and the moving trains. I really enjoy them at the end part when you go down the hill, but this place has a lot of separate paths as well. You can go on the boat instead of the road, then there's two separate paths after the little shop thingies. Finally at the end, there's one where you can go to the right of the finish line. <gasps> Which is just amazing, because you get to go where all the trains are. Also, you can be hit by a train again. I think the best part of it is going down the hill, though, because you can go up and land on the train, which I still suck at doing, and always end up getting hit by it and losing three coins. Now, are you prepared to judge me forever? But first, some honorable mentions. Number one, water park. This one is really high on the visually appealing side, though it's kind of weak on everything else, which is why it didn't make it. Mainly the layout, it's kind of weak on. Number two, Electrodrome. I really like this one. I just feel like after a while, unlike the other ones, the layout gets kind of boring, but it's another really good looking stage. Number three, Wario's Goldmine. A really good layout that I'm really nostalgic for from Mario Kart Wii. And I'm kind of surprised it didn't make the list, but it's not that high on the visual appeal, but the track is great. It does feel kind of like a roller coaster. Rainbow Road N64 at number 4. A great track, yet I barely ever play it. I think it might be on my list if I actually played it more. Number 5, Shy Guy Falls. This track looks really good, and the layout is nice. I just think it's one of the tracks that suffers from getting boring after a while. Are you ready to hear the worst opinion in your life? Number 1. Toad's Turnpike. This is not a joke. This is probably the worst opinion I've ever had in my life. Everyone is going to judge me for this. But this is my favorite track. 
I really like the traffic maps. I know a lot of people don't like it due to how boring the concept is. But I just really like the feeling of it. Like you could be on a real track. You could also go on the walls for a little speed boost. Also, when you get an invincibility star, you can destroy all the cars. Also, with some of the cars, you can speed boost and then fly off it, which just feels majestic. I don't know why I like the traffic orientated track so much. Maybe it's because I can get hit by a car. Which is just a garbage opinion to a lot of people. But I like it. So that's my Mario Kart 8 track list of terrible opinions that I'll make you face palm. So, how are the terrible opinions? You're probably cringing from my opinions right now. I don't know what to say rather than um, have a good day or night or whenever you somehow see this video.